The Alienware M15 R5 gaming laptop was missing about 10% of its CUDA cores when it initially launched. I've covered this in another video, linked down in the description, but now Alienware have released an update that unlocks the rest of those CUDA cores. However, it's not exactly doing quite as well as I expected. I've retested the M15 R5 in 10 different games to show you how well it performs both before and after the update. And I've also tested out thermals so we can get a complete picture of how this laptop is supposed to perform. These are the specs of my M15 R5. I've I've got a Ryzen 9 5900HX processor, NVIDIA RTX 3070 graphics, 16 gigs of memory, and a 1080p 165Hz screen. It's worth noting that the 1080p 165Hz screen I've got means that we're stuck with Optimus. The 1440p 240Hz or 1080p 360Hz options come with advanced Optimus and G-Sync, so I would expect those to perform even better to what I'm showing here. Here's how things looked before the update. So both system information in NVIDIA's control panel and GPU-Z show 4000 608 CUDA cores. And then once the new vBIOS update was installed, we can see the correct number of 5,120 cores are shown. So basically I downloaded more CUDA cores, hopefully not too long before we can download more RAM. The update wasn't available for me through the Alienware update software. You have to manually go to the website to get it. Hopefully this changes, otherwise I'm sure a lot of machines will probably never get patched. Here's the download page for the update on Dell's website. I found it interesting that under fixes and enhancements, it notes, corrected the CUDA core information in system information from 4608 to 5120 in the NVIDIA control panel application. Based on that description, it kind of just makes it sound like this is a superficial fix, rather than actually modifying the amount of available CUDA cores. So let's check out some actual performance tests and see what the differences were before and after the update. These are the screenshots from hardware info when running the Heaven GPU benchmark in the same room with a 21 degree Celsius ambient room temperature. The TDP and clock speeds are basically the same and within margin of error both before and after the update, but check out the temperature differences. After the update was running 6 degrees cooler on average over the course of an hour. The GPU hotspot temperature was also around 7 degrees cooler after the update. So same workload in the same conditions, literally the only change was the vBIOS update. So what's going on here? I don't know for sure, but this is what I think's happening. On average, the RTX 3070 graphics was using the same 122 watts both before and after the update. But before the update, that same amount of power was available for fewer cooler. CUDA cores. After the update, that same amount of power then becomes available for 10% more CUDA cores. And CUDA cores take up physical space on the die. So in theory, more CUDA cores equals more physical surface area. So my thought is if you're spreading that same amount of power out over a bigger area, then it could lead to lower GPU hotspots. Again, I can't say for sure. This is just my best guess based on the information available. Now, although things are clearly different with the GPU only workload, there's basically no change when the processor is also under load. Like when we've got an actual game running, for instance. These are the temperatures for both the CPU and GPU when under combined stress test. So both processor and graphics are fully loaded up. Both before and after the update, we're looking at basically the same temperatures. Likewise, the clock speeds are essentially the same too. Technically, after the update was around 20 MHz slower on both the CPU and GPU, but this is quite small and within margin of error. Again, the power levels for both CPU and GPU were about the same in these CPU plus GPU stress tests. No obvious important differences. So just to summarize things so far, after that vBIOS update in a GPU only stress test, I was seeing lower temperatures, but that was about the only difference. And then when the laptop was under combined CPU plus GPU stress test, there was basically no changes to note. Just before the games, let's take a look at the 3D Mark results, as these are typically GPU heavy. I've got the updated results shown in purple, and in all tests, the updated system is scoring better than before the update, though the differences aren't that big. The Time Spy graphics score is about 3.5% higher after the update, while the Fire Strike graphics score has a 1%. 1.8% improvement. The Port Royal ray tracing test on the other hand was around 6.7% higher after the update. So after the update there's clearly a boost in these GPU only workloads. But what about actual games? The results surprised me and weren't quite what I was expecting. So let's compare 10 games both before and after the update. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in the exact same manner both before the update in the red bars and after the update in the purple bars. Regardless of the setting preset or whether or not we're using ray tracing, the updated laptop is performing better. The new vBIOS update was reaching almost 13% higher average FPS at low settings, while ultra settings was 4.5% ahead. It's not all games though. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark, and the system before the update was actually slightly ahead between low and medium settings. Granted, it's 
it's only a small amount and for the most part a couple of FPSs within margin of error. The updated laptop was ahead at ultra settings, and generally I'd expect higher setting presets that are more GPU heavy to see the benefits of the CUDA core change. Things really start getting weird in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Regardless of the settings in use, the updated system was consistently behind. Sure it's often just a 1 to 2 FPS difference, but the laptop prior to the update was coming out ahead consistently. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was similar. At most setting presets, it's within margin of error, though for some reason high settings was a fair bit different in favour of before the update. Control is a GPU heavy game, and at medium and high settings, the updated system is back in front, though it's just a 3 FPS or so difference. Nothing major, putting high settings around 4% ahead after the update. Here's how things look with ray tracing enabled, another workload that's heavy on the GPU, and this time the update was almost giving us a 5% boost to average FPS. Performance improves with DLSS enabled, and at max settings the update is back to giving us around a 4% performance boost. Battlefield 5 was another weird one where the laptop was doing better before the update at all setting levels. I double checked the results after the update and got the same again. It's only a small change, but again I'm not really sure why we'd see lower performance with more CUDA cores available. Microsoft Flight Simulator was always slightly ahead with the update both in terms of average FPS and 1% lows regardless of the setting preset in use, but it's often quite a small difference. Watch Dogs Legion doesn't really tell us anything useful. Both were about the same with the highest ultra setting preset, while results at lower setting presets were going one way or the other. Likewise, The Witcher 3 was very similar before and after the update. No real changes and it varied slightly one way or the other based on the settings in use. CSGO was generally doing better after the update. The 1% low results were ahead with the update at all setting levels, while average FPS had the biggest improvement at max settings though it's less than a 2% gain. These are the differences out of all 10 games tested at the highest setting level, though I've also included ray tracing and DLSS results which are adding more results in favour of the updated system despite them coming from the same games. In any case, out of this selection, the updated M15 R5 was best case offering 5% higher average FPS in control with ray tracing, while some games were actually doing worse. Now it's a small difference either way and in general the trend is positive, but still I wasn't expecting to see some doing a little worse. Granted it could be some other issue with the testing, though I feel confident on the testing both before and after updating. Testing at 1440p may have shown a bigger difference as this would put more of a workload on the GPU, but unfortunately I've got the 1080p screen model here. I guess I could have used an external screen in order to run at higher resolutions, but basically I was just using the data that was already collected prior to the update. Those 10 games were just tested out for my usual game benchmark video, but that was before I found out about this issue. So instead of just scrapping that work and doing it all again anyway, I I figured it would be useful to show you the before and after differences. Given we actually saw worse performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5, compared to others the M15 R5 still isn't stacking up well for an RTX 3070 gaming laptop, at least in these titles. But I should note that the other screen options with Advanced Optimus should perform better as they would bypass the iGPU. Battery life saw basically no change either. After the update, running The Witcher 3 lasted a couple of minutes less. But this is margin of error stuff and not enough to draw any solid conclusions from. So at the end of the day, after the update, the M15 R5 doesn't get that much of a performance boost. In general there is some improvement, but nothing major. Personally, I did expect a bigger difference than this given 10% of the CUDA cores were missing, but perhaps at least at 1080p it wasn't enough to matter. In any case, I think it's good that Alienware customers are now getting that full 3070 that they're paying for, and that the problem has been resolved. I'm still working on the full review of the Alienware M15 R5 gaming laptop, so if you're new to the channel then get subscribed so that you don't miss it. Come and join me in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel on Patreon, and while you wait for the review come and check out some of my other videos over here, I'll see you over in one of those next.